the people who were having suicidal thoughts weren't going into the doctor as much. So those people who went to the doctor were at the doctor six hours a year, let's say. And the ones that were thinking about suicide were there two hours a year. So that's three times more just being at the doctor in one year. For those who were at risk of attempting suicide, the people that did not attempt suicide were at the doctor 50 hours a year. Those who tried to hurt themselves were there less than an hour a year. 50 hours, one hour. That's a staggering difference. I think about the people that might be falling through the cracks. Chronic pain in and of itself is very isolating over time. It's hard, and in particular with disorders like fibromyalgia, you can't see the pain, you can't see, like with cancer, you might lose your hair. If you get in a car accident, you'll have a cast. Fibromyalgia is pain that you cannot see. I think it's just a really good sign that we see this in our data too. It shows the people that are attempting suicide aren't in the doctor's office. And that's even harder for the providers that follow up with them because, you know, they treat the people that they see, but what about the people that they don't see? And that's what these models do. They search the entire medical record. So it has the potential to find the people that aren't as engaged. Those people are going to be really hard to find if you just um, think through who haven't I seen in a while. In the past few years, it would be like searching for a needle in a haystack. Out of thousands of people, those that received mental health services of some kind, not one went on to attempt suicide.